this is the title of my talk. It's called The Fallacy of Fast. And, uh, and it's going to be, uh, let me see. And, oh, my name is Ines Sombra, and I'm a systems engineer at Fastly, um, at Random Mood at Twitter. And if you need to get a hold of me, it's Ines at uh, Fastly.com. So uh, this is a little bit of what we're not going to cover today. This is not going to be like a Mr. Miyagi moment where we go and then we learn something together and we go through a beautiful journey that makes us better. Uh, it's going to be more like this. Uh, <laughs> This is a reflection on the shortcuts that we tend to take whenever we're trying to iterate fastly, both uh, in fastly, get it, uh, organizations and our code bases. And I decided to split this into two areas. So we're going to cover common mistakes, and the other one are the, the things that I think that matters. So these are the two things that we're going to do since we have a little bit of time. So um, so let's keep going. So so. Common mistakes. So what are the things that we tend to sacrifice first whenever we're trying to just to, to rush? Uh, I think I bundled everything into one single main point. Then I think the mistakes that we make tend to do whenever we accidentally de-emphasize long-term quality and system stability. And, and we do this with uh, several, like I think, both micro and not so micro decisions, and, and I just like put them together into, into, like, into the things that are coming up right now. So we accidentally do this, for example, whenever we deprioritize testing. So cutting corners in testing is never a good idea, but I think it also carries a hidden cost that it may not necessarily be apparent. Uh, I've heard things like, we hire great engineers, great engineers don't need tests, uh, that's bullshit. So you always need tests, and when you don't have them, I think that you also convey the message that quality maybe doesn't necessarily, it's not as important to you as you may think so. So, uh, so having tests is important. Uh, having good tests is uh, better than having shitty tests, but um, what makes a good test is also a little bit esoteric. Uh, you have to also make sure that your tests uh, are inclusive of your system, and then, by, uh, by, and then that actually like, test the full system. And what do we mean by full system? We mean things uh, that test the client, uh, test your actual code and its inputs, and also test the provisioning code. So if you have a system that gets set up, or everything that your system needs to run gets set up, for example, with Chef and a cookbook, and you don't test that cookbook, you don't really necessarily know if your system is going to be like uh, operating well whenever somebody fucks up a cookbook. Uh, also, um, I tend to swear a little bit, and I was expecting Arthur to be earlier in this talk, so I would be less uh, foul language, but uh, he wasn't, so uh, you got me. So uh, also, code reviews are important. And then they are not the same thing as having tests. Uh, you have to have both. So code reviews, yes, they help you drive quality in your code bases, but they're not substitute for tests. So just like have both. And another thing that is interesting, or, or you may know, and then a lot of the things that are just like things that seem um, seem like like um, like true statements, but sometimes you tend to like just relax them whenever you're trying to move really, really fast. Uh, continuous integration is really important, and I think it's critical to velocity, quality, and transparency. You need to be able to track like the quality of your applications, or like even just like how a test is performing over time. So uh, testing is important. So make sure that you don't deprioritize it whenever you're trying to iterate fast. Another thing that, that people also tend to do is whenever they deprioritize operational things. So I, I mean ops, but it could be like in your organization or department. But it also could mean like, I, I mean it in the sense that every system carries some sort of operational task associated. It has some uh, operational task associated, them, associated with them. And whenever you cut corners on this, uh, everything that you cut a corner will eventually come and, and screw you over. Uh, at the worst possible moment. And normally the worst possible moment is whenever you're having in the middle of an incident and you realize that somebody did something that is either not documented or not part of your infrastructure as code, and you have to solve it on the moment. So don't cut corners on this one. Uh, also, playbooks are a must. And I put a little handy thing for uh, things that we're emphasizing in our, in our organization as well. Uh, we too have realized that some of our applications come with like this. Uh, you go to a person to ask how it's set up and things like that. So now we're trying to make sure that uh, are we, we carry playbooks in, within our applications, and they're self-documented. Uh, what makes for a good playbook? Like you have to be able to explain how your system gets configured, uh, where things are, like logs. Um, also, um, uh, what are the things that, what are the inter-system dependencies as well? And what do you do? What does the system look like whenever it's operating correctly and whenever it's not operating correctly? So another thing that I've observed too is that uh, release stability is often tied to system stability. How you deploy your application, if it's like a lot of manual steps and it's a little bit esoteric and you have to sacrifice a chicken every time you roll something to production, uh, likely the thing uh, is going to be a process that could be error prone and then your releases are not going to be as stable and as, as mechanized as they should be. So ironize your deploy processes. 
Uh, another thing that we sacrifice uh, system quality with is whenever we deprioritize the inside. And then by inside, I mean like, I mean a lot of things with this, with this title. I mean that sometimes you decide that something is good enough to put into production, but you punt on the monitoring or alerting, and it's like, ah, future you problem. And, and it shouldn't be to production unless you have a way to, like, to instrument it and just like, view it over time. So metrics are important. Make sure that they're part of your MVP. Uh, another thing that happens that is interesting is that sometimes you have an alert that keeps popping up, popping up, popping up, and then you get used to this, this thing, and you start ignoring it. And sometimes they're real, and sometimes they're not. But then you have this thing where like, your entire team is getting used to this happening, and you take it as a new normal behavior. And I feel that it's pretty dangerous. So alert fatigue is, 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 is this, like, the word to describe this type of thing. So don't let it get that far. Just like, at least just go back and prioritize the, the make sure that you do maintenance on your tests as well. Another thing that is also, I put little sparkles on things that are like new realizations to me, that you can put links to a playbook from an alert. And I even have a friend that auto-escalates in, in the priority of alerts that don't have links to the playbook to make sure that everything is documented. Because you're a new person, or you're like the person on call, and you have this alert, and you have nothing actionable to, to, to like follow up with. So that becomes really important. So, Link your alerts to your playbooks. And also, don't ignore error handling and security. Error handling is, like, is, is something that uh, we could be talking a lot more of. But the way so there's even a paper that I have uh, as a reference where they describe that catastrophic data failures in applications are often the cause of like, not handling errors correctly, because they bubble up a few levels, and the level above just drops it. So this is important. Uh, don't deprioritize it whenever you're going fast. And this is another corollary, which is deprioritizing knowledge. And by this, I mean like the system, the, the way that your system is constructed, and then the dependencies of your system ought to be explicit. Uh, and also, whenever your system depends on something like a database, uh, knowing a little bit of your database is really, really important. You just not grab Mongo out of the bag and then just like decide that, that this is going to be your primary data store without knowing a little bit more of the operational inner workings of this data store. Uh, also, I feel like having one person that is the go-to person and this one is, is like slightly dangerous. You should deprecate this person, and you do that either with your playbooks, information about your system, or you actually put somebody that becomes the first level of, of uh, the first tier, and then you just then deprecate, continue deprecating people. So, and these are one of the things that we learn, or these are the things that are just like my observations on this one. It's like, yeah, fine, tests are important. You shouldn't sacrifice them. It's important to test the full system, because you're not yet done whenever you test your code base. Inputs matter, so you shouldn't assume that it's the best, like you're always going to get the best like, case, like values. You should make sure that your system can stay up whenever you get values that are not necessarily the ones that you expect. So, so test it fully. Test your provisioning code, because nobody really does that. Or a lot of people don't necessarily do that, and, and think it's very easy, because like, sometimes your provisioning as code make it not necessarily as straightforward. Uh, but I think it's, there's a lot of value in, in, in just like, spending that time. Uh, also, like, we're in this time of uh, microservices. And every time I hear the word microservices, I want to chug uh, uh, some sort of alcoholic beverage. But like, right now that we have uh, microservices, I think then you, you end up like, being responsible for this service that you, as an engineer, like, have control over. And this also implies that you actually have to level up operationally. Like you have to be able to support this thing. And, and things that you may not necessarily have thought that they were important now become things that you have to be at least well-versed in. Well, like well-versed in. Architectural choices uh, made in a rush always tend to stick around. And, and something that you didn't necessarily think was important when you launch a mini service, like for example, replication, or how would you scale it up or down, become things that could either limit your capacity to grow this server, the service uh, whenever you actually need it. So let's, let's now, since we went through everything that we could do to fall in our faces and, 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 and the things that impact quality on the longer term, let's, let's reflect then about, about the things that do matter whenever we're building like systems, like when, when we're high up building our, our applications. So I think minding system design is super important. And that is my, my ode to Texas. Yeah. So you go in a truck, and it's just on fire, but it, and it's great. And, and, and you can actually have a lot of fun doing this. But I think simple and utilitarian design takes you a long way. So, so just like uh, well understood components are well understood for a reason, and you can trust them, and you actually know how to do them whenever you're like super exhausted. I think also another, another problem that we tend to run into is when we're trying to go super fast, we're also, uh, we delude ourselves that maybe our problem is unique, and then there's nothing out there that solves it. 
And sometimes we don't have the time to actually figure out that maybe there is something that solves it, or maybe like with a plugin, like is something that would take us 90% could be the thing that is just also well understood a part of our infrastructure. So mine they're not invented here. Just like be careful whenever you believe that you have a special snowflake. Maybe sometimes you do, but maybe sometimes you don't. And another thing about system design that is very important or that is very handy is whenever you implement things behind and put things behind feature flags and on and off switches. So you can kill, like you, you can actually achieve graceful degradation. And also you should test them because uh, what good does you uh, an on and off switch if whenever you have to turn it off, like that thing doesn't work. So, so mind your system design. Mind your system limits is important too. You should rate, uh, rate limit your API calls, especially on calls that are public or expensive to run, because sometimes when you have a public API, you don't necessarily understand how users are going to like, use it. So uh, rate limiting and tracking like, the, the API calls is, is also very important. Uh, another thing that is, like, that was, that is interesting, uh, or something that I've learned recently, is like another approach too, or a complementary approach, is to be able to prioritize your systems and, and, and rank them. What are the things that are absolutely critical and which data is absolutely critical to the, to the well functioning or like, the well behavior of your system, and what are the things that you can drop? For example, something that could be expensive that is not critical, maybe the thing that by shutting it off with your off switch like provides system availability when, for example, you're under attack or, or when things are not necessarily going great. So, and, and this is another one. Uh, there's some value to capacity analysis, even though you may have cloud environments or you may, though, may, though you have, uh, you may not necessarily have traditional hardware, and I've learned this recently myself. Uh, the, the, the exercise of thinking about resources and your system and how you express that in terms of customer value and, and customer activity carries some, some, some weight, and I think it's important. So, so just, yeah. And another thing that, that I think is also like valuable is whenever you mind your system configuration. So systems assumptions are dangerous. If you believe that your system is always going to be next to another system, uh, that is basically a bottleneck for you to re-architect things. Or whenever you're moving things around, that dependency, if it's not explicit, you're likely to miss it. Uh, consolidating system configuration is really interesting because sometimes you're, we've talked about testing inputs. We talk about testing config provisioning code as well. But also there's something that, that becomes a little bit more complex whenever your system either is, it takes its input and configuration from a data bag or a config file. And, and in whenever you don't have them standardized, you have one system over here that takes it from a data bag. The other one is just like a config file. And the other one, which is the worst system that you could ever deal with, is whenever they have things hard coded. So if you're addressing localhost uh, anywhere, uh, that is the, the, the absolute worst and it's a devil. So if you have something that is just like makes a hard coded assumption, uh, it's, it's just like really terrible, and it will come back and, and, and like bite you later. And, and it's very easy to miss whenever you're just trying to like get something out of the door. So keep that in mind. Distrust is also very healthy. Uh, I, I, as, I, as Human mentioned, I come from a, from a well, third world country. I mean, it's, our, it's Argentina. We have really excellent steak. But every time somebody tells me something, uh, something and doesn't put a caveat on it, I, I, I just like immediately distrust it. So, so you should distrust a lot of things too and just keep a healthy distrust. I'm not saying that everybody's out there to like to get you and you should be paranoid, but sometimes your clients, even, even if they're internal, can, uh, can actually like hurt your application. Uh, sometimes they just like have behaviors that you didn't expect and then you have to actually at least consider this to be a possibility so you can guard your, your, your design uh, or you can actually like, yeah, guard your design while you're, you're in it. Uh, also, I think decisions have an expiration date. Everything that you did a few months ago or even a few years ago, especially when you're trying to iterate fast, uh, should be like should be um, reevaluated, and it should be okay to reevaluate it. You shouldn't have a sacred cow that just because three years ago we decided that this was a solution, that solution will still apply. And I think periodically uh, reevaluate them uh, is, 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 is a good thing because I mean honestly, like three months ago, you probably were dumber than where you are today. And as a matter of fact, this talk is carrying maybe a three months. Uh, shelf life. Anything that you ask me that is it's like after three months, if I still believe these things, then maybe I haven't really done a very good job of growing. I should caveat some things more. So this trusting on what you did before is it's a good thing. I mean, uh, and, and I think that you should actually build this in, in your culture. I mean, it shouldn't be that, you know, two people like six months ago decided or like maybe a year or so ago decided that this was the way and you can't question that. Whenever if you find yourself and your organization resisting this type of inquiry, then you have a problem and you should actually just make sure that, that this doesn't happen. Oh, one minute. So what we learned? We learned that it's important to keep track of your technical debt and actually repay it. 
because we always are going to have this. We always have to cut corners sometimes, but then it's just like, it's a matter of identifying what you did and being able to repay it. And it's about lowering the, the risk of change with tools and culture. Things like tests, continuous integration, things that actually just like allow you to iterate fast should be combined with things that allow you to do that safely. So fine, we have system quality as our goal. We have tools in the middle and processes that allow, you, that allow us to iterate towards this, this quality and stability. And, and, and things that deal with like the assumptions that you make either help you or not help you to get to that goal. So you want to make sure that at least you have this, this you, you know where the, the goal is and then just like put processes and tools in a way that allows your organization to just like to iterate quickly towards that. Uh, this is my TLDR. So if you like, if you were not paying attention at all and then you just like raised up your, your eyes, hello. Uh, you, there's two things that I want you to keep in mind. Uh, it's easy to sacrifice things and, and, and the easy to sacrifice things, maybe things that are costly to correct later. Uh, culture, you, the culture of your company is established daily, and then the little mini, mini choices that you make, like whether you prioritize testing or not, say something more about, about your organization that you realize. Uh, testing matters, again, uh, this is my, my, my rant of the year, and not, process, not all process is necessarily evil, so you have to be just like be appropriate with that. System boundaries and dependencies ought to be explicit, playbooks are your friends, uh, use skill switches and limits within your design, and also like prioritizing your services and know what can you live without is very valuable because sometimes you need to make this quick decision. So another picture, and, and there's a little repo with like resources and things that I found useful, but, uh, but yeah, so that, that's it. So let's see, let's, let's go fast without making, uh, with few, making fewer mistakes or like, yes. So that's it, that, that's all I have. Yeah.